Just the leg. Uh, so today's uh, teaching will be on the demonstration of the 37 point mandala offering along with the uh, reciting the whole section on the mandala offering practice which is in the Mundo practice book. So first of all before one offers the mandala uh, or starts anything one needs to first um, uh, set up the mandala shrine, the shrine mandala offering. So for that, uh, is it the, just as in the diagram, which is in the Mundo textbook, there should be a mandala in the center with five heaps, um, which signify or symbolize the Guru, the tutelary deities, um, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. So there are five heaps on the mandala, and then surrounding the mandala, there will be um, several bow, uh, bowls. So in the first bowl, there will be water. And this is uh, just a usual uh, water offering, uh, sort of like to signify a drink. And then um, the second water offering will be water offering for washing the feet. And then uh, the third bowl uh, can either be filled with water and one can place a flower on it or it can be filled with rice and one can place a fa uh, flower on it. Then for the fourth bowl, uh, one can fill it up with rice and uh, insert incense in it. And then for the fifth, uh, one can uh, place a bowl filled with rice and then put a lamp on it. Or can, one can just put a lamp on it without a bowl. Uh, one can just place a lamp without a bowl. That is also uh, fine. And then uh, following that, um, the sixth offering would be scented water. So for that one can uh, either just uh, fill a bowl with water and place it, or one can fill it with rice and then place a conch shell filled with water in it. And, um, and when the, the water which you fill the uh, conch shell can be saffron water. And then uh, for the seventh bowl, one can fill it up with rice and place a fruit in it. Or one can just uh, simply place a fruit in a bowl without filling it up with rice. Or, or one can just put a plate uh, with a fruit or anything that is edible or it can be a dolma if you have one and then um, for the last uh, offering one places a bowl and that will be filled with rice and uh, that just sort of uh, simply signifies a uh, or sort of supposed to mean and signify a, a direction holder so it's supposed to be a direction holder so that is the shrine mandal offering uh, so after having set up that shrine, uh, then one proceeds to practice the mandala offering. So having first uh, done the, the refuge and the generation of the enlightenment thought, now one will recite the mantra Om Subhava Shindu Sarva Dhamma Subhava Shindu Ham. So by reciting this, uh, the meaning of the mantra is all phenomena are totally pure from the beginning. So when one recites this, one should visualize that all of this, uh, the perception one has, all of the appearances, the place where you are sitting, the, the place surrounding the house, the, uh, the walls, the, the roof, the uh, outside of the house, the, the valley and whatever, everything, all of the land is uh, sort of dissolves into emptiness, the nature of emptiness. And then one recites Brumli Rinchi Shami Pojangu, Sinti Benyi Dawa Zebeteng, Jizu Lama Dorji Changi Gu, Senbe Ramzi Geshin Zumba Deng, Thakur Gibe Lama Nam Gikor, Dundu Yidam, Yesu Sangye Dam, Gyabdu Tamji Yundu Gendu Nam Shiyan, Gyamne Gyazu Tindar Tim, Tenam Susu Tone Uechebe, Choji Shinam Gyawa Sedanje, Pame Nam Ka Kawa Jem Tande, Susu Tembe Tamye Yeme Gyu. So when one recites that, one should visualize that from the empty, the nature of emptiness arises the syllable brum 
and um, from the broom, the syllable broom, arises a, um, a mansion, a celestial mansion, as it says, uh, and in the mansion, in the middle of the mansion, there is going to be a, um, there arises a lion supported throne. So two lions in each direction of the throne, and so they support or hold up the throne. And um, on the throne, on top of the throne, there is a lotus and sun and moon disc. And on that, seated on that, is one's own guru, from whom one has received a Vajrayana empowerments. And uh, in this case, it will be someone who one has, from uh, uh, whom one has received the Lamje and the like. So one's own guru seats uh, is seated on the sun and moon disc uh, and on the lion throne. But the Guru does not appear in the human form, but rather in the form of Buddha Vajradhara, who is, uh, in, whose color is blue and uh, is wearing a lot of celestial garments and um, is holding the a Vajra and bell uh, in this way. So one should visualize the Guru in that form. And um, The Buddha Vajradhara, who is none other than your guru, is uh, seated, smiling, and very happy and joyous. And uh, then one should also visualize that uh, surrounding Buddha Vajradhara is the lineage gurus, uh, many of all of the lineage gurus. And then uh, in front of the Buddha Vajradhara, there is the tutelary deities, or also known as the Yidam deity. And on the right side of the uh, Buddha Vajradhara, there's all of the Buddhas of the ten directions and three times. And then um, behind Buddha Vajradhara, there is the uh, Dharma textbooks, uh, which uh, symbolizes the Dharma. And then on the left side of Buddha Vajradhara, there is the enlightened Bodhisattvas, uh, which are the Sangha. And then also one should visualize that um, surrounding all of them uh, on cluster, uh, on many vast cluster of clouds, there are other objects of refuge. And um, from all of their hearts, one should visualize that uh, many light rays issue forth and um, travel, sort of travel to the many uh, Buddha realms, uh, uh, the Buddha fields in all of the ten directions and um, sort of invite the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas residing in all of the directions, uh, the ten directions and by inviting them they all arrive uh, in the sky uh, in front of oneself and then they uh, sort of dissolve uh, into the objects of refuge that one has just generated. So by that, the Samaya aspect and also the wisdom aspect uh, become merged and uh, non become non-dually emerged. They become one and uh, not separate. So, so that sort of um, having uh, one, that sort of, uh, the whole point of that is to uh, make them truly alive. Um, because one generated the body of all of the Buddhas, the good ones on Guru, the Buddhas and the surrounding retinue. And then when we invite the mind of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and they enter it, then uh, what we have just generated becomes truly uh, animate or alive. So now we are ready to make offerings to them and to pray to them. So following that visualization, one now must... Um, make offerings to them. So for that one uh, visualizes that uh, from oneself emanates uh, the goddesses, the different uh, types of goddesses, the goddesses who will offer, who hold uh, water offerings, the, diff the two water offerings, and then there's the goddesses who hold flowers and the like. So uh, visualize that uh, from them, from oneself, uh, these goddesses issue forth, and these goddesses, uh, in turn, make offerings to the objects of refuge. 
so when one recites the mantra one needs to do the hand mudras and along with that one should visualize um, at the same time that one is making the different offerings so in order to do this one recites Omo Guru Buddha Bodhisattva Saparewara Argam Padam Bhupe Dupe Aloki Gende Nivede Shabda And then after having uh, done that, then one should recite the Dharani of the Cloud of Offerings. Uh, so the, the meaning of that is right below the mantra, so I will not uh, mention that, but I will just uh, recite the mantra. So when one does this, one can pick up one's Vajra and Bell and uh, use that while reciting the mantra. So with that one, uh, besides the uh, Dharani of the Cloud of Offerings, and then following that, one besides the seven uh, limb prayer. Uh, the first one can recite the short version, which goes as So the first line, uh, which reads as I prostrate to the holy place of refuge, is the first of the seven limb, which is prostration. The second, which reads is, um, I offer a cloud of offerings like that of Samadha Bhadra, is the second limb, which is to make offerings. Uh, the third is, I confess all misdeeds and downfalls accumulated since beginning this time. So that is the third limb, which is the confession of negative deeds. Then the fourth, which is, I rejoice in all the merits of virtuous deeds, is the uh, limb of rejoicing in the good deeds. It's the fourth limb. Then for the fifth uh, one recites, I request the concourse along with their sons to turn the wheel of Dharma. And so that is the uh, the fifth limb, which is requesting the Buddhas to turn the wheel of Dharma. The sixth is, I entreat those uh, concourse to remain and not pass into Nirvana. So this is the sixth limb, which is the requesting them to not pass into Nirvana requesting the Buddhas not to pass into Nirvana. The seventh, which is, I dedicate the accumulation of virtue for sentient beings to obtain enlightenment, is the last uh, limb, which is the dedication of merit, so that all sentient beings may swiftly attain enlightenment. So that is the short prayer of the seven limb prayer, the short version. Uh, to recite a more extended version, one may recite so 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 this is the extended version. It's quite very clear, so I'll just um, mention which is which, uh, which verse belongs to which of uh, the seven limbs. So the first uh, verse, the first, uh, second, um, 
third and uh, fourth and so the first four verses uh, are of um, prostration are offering venerance offering homage to the objects of refuge and then the fifth and the sixth and the seventh verse are uh, verses of making offerings. The eighth uh, verse is uh, to confess one's negative deeds. The ninth verse is to rejoice in the good deeds. Uh, of others. The tenth verse is to uh, request uh, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to turn the wheel of Dharma. And the eleventh verse is to request them not to request the Buddhas not to pass into Nirvana. And the last verse uh, is the dedicating the merit. So that is the extended version of the seven limb prayer. And then following that, uh, now one must uh, offer the 37-point mandala, uh, the 37-heap mandala offering. So in order to do that, one must first recite the Vajrasattva Hiruka mantra several times while wiping the mandala off well. And then one should, uh, following that, then one must offer the 37-point mandala offering. And uh, for that, one just needs to recite that one time, the mandala, 37-point mandala offering, one time. Uh, and while reciting that, uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, in the previous video, one should uh, visualize that it, the cause of all of the universe uh, is uh, one's own good karma, accumulated in, uh, three times. Uh, and it appears in the form, uh, all of the good karma appears in the form of the universe, the Mount Sumeru, the continents, uh, the sun, moon, and all of that, the like. So one should visualize in that way. And also one should visualize that uh, all of the lands, that there's nothing that is uh, impure in the universe, uh, in the mandala offering that one is offering, nothing that is impure, whether it be earth, water, um, uh, and then uh, houses, uh, lands, whatever it is, everything is pure and wonderful and beautiful. So one should visualize in that way. And um, the inhabitants are all uh, Mahayana practitioners uh, who are endowed with the eight freedoms and um, with the ten advantages for practicing the Dharma and uh, all of the good qualities that any person could ever wish for. So one should visualize that. And also one thing that I did not get to mention in the earlier video was that uh, one should also visualize the heavenly realm. So there is the heavenly realm of the four great kings of the four directions. And that is like around the, uh, uh, around the, the top of the uh, golden band of mountains, then also, uh, and also around the the base of Mount Sumeru, and then going higher up, there's other uh, heavenly realms like the lower heavenly realms of the desire gods, and, uh, and then also there is the heaven of the thirty three, where the god, uh, the king of the gods, Lord Indra, lives, and so one should visualize the six desire. Uh, realms, the six heavens of the desire realms uh, to be there. And then on top of that, one should visualize the uh, the heaven of the form realms. So that there are 17 uh, form uh, realms or, or heavens of the form realms. So one should visualize that and also visualize the uh, one can also visualize the the beings of the formless realm, the gods of the formless realm, they do not have a place or a city to live in, but um, they exist and um, they sort of 
are always in a meditative concentration, so one can visualize all of these gods. And the most important thing is that when one offers the mandala, one, it should not be with strong attachment that this mandala truly exists, but rather it should be sort of uh, there with the um, thought or sort of the, the meditation or the understanding that it is of, uh, that, uh, of an empty nature. So the mandala offering which you are offering, making is uh, of an empty nature. Um, something is there, like the form and all of that is there, the beautiful things is there, but uh, it is, the nature of it is empty. So, so when it's sort of similar to a rainbow. You cannot touch a rainbow. It's visible, it's colorful, uh, but uh, its nature is empty. So something like that. So one should visualize it all there, vibrant, uh, visible, and uh, colorful, but uh, empty of nature. So that is how one should visualize when one makes the mandala offering. So before I start the demonstration, uh, in, to share an interesting fact, the 37 uh, point mandala offering was composed, the prayer of it was composed and first put into writing by the seventh psychic teacher, Dogun Chogya Papa, who was from the Kun family and uh, was the king of Tibet, as well as one of the five founding masters of the Sakya tradition. So he was the first one to write this, uh, this prayer, the 37 point mandala often. And uh, since then, all of the Tibetan Buddhist traditions have adopted this prayer into their own traditions and uh, practice this and recite this prayer. So this is an interesting fact to know, uh, which I would like to share. And so, this, as I mentioned earlier, this 37-point mandala offering just needs to be recited once. And then following that, uh, one mainly needs to recite or count the seven-heap mandala offering, which is the shorter version. So for that, um, at best, would be if you can recite just as the great Sakya Master Gaudian Doji Chang or Le Paramiche recited or counted, uh, and or you could say accumulated, and he accumulated the mandala offering, the shorter version of the mandala offering, about one million times. So that is a great number. And if you can recite that much, that would be most excellent. But even if you cannot recite that much, one can still recite as much as one can. So one should take uh, great endeavors to uh, recite uh, the seven point mandala offering, as this is a great way to uh, accumulate a lot of merit and um, uh, purify one's negative deeds very quickly and very easily. So now I will do the uh, demonstration of the 37 point mandala offering. Shri Guru ha ho bhagavan beza hiru gama muza hiru gaba ma samaya sadwa hum pyam shiri beza hiru ga samaya manu balai hiru ga dino badi da didu me bawa sudo kaya me bawa nu radu me bawa subo kaya me bawa sawa sidi me bawa yadu sawa gama sudame sidam shiri guru ha ho bhagavan beza hiru gama muza hiru gaba ma samaya sadwa hum pyam Bon Jamini 
マメマチジャマニマダワリンボチェドチョレナブラギャベギャツンラダミエバジョピソソバマサワメバティニチンチンサワダンギブラチペパデンラマタンバナムダンイダムキンクロギラツオサンギダンチャンジュセンバタンバチュギョンウェソマニジェノレツオダンチェバナムラウルワギウ土地周围顿土习俗，首先呢，大家给老师那么大，一些给聪明要素，做不了清洁那么多数。今年八家大街把他们家江西打不了清洁那么多数，人把你给顶眼睛，看不了清洁那给不了清洁那么多数，过年给各帮他们把讨不了清洁。拉杜索，我摩古罗布达布提萨多萨巴列瓦拉，人那曼扎拉本扎曼嘎萨摩扎萨巴人那萨玛耶吽。So after having offered the thirty-seven point mandala offering, at the end one just recited the mantra, Om Guru Buddha Bodhisattva Sabariwara Rena Mandala Bunzame Ga Samanda Sabarana Samaye Hum. So the meaning of that is first, if you break up the syllables, Om. The first is Om. So that means bestower of the accumul the true accumulations, and、um, and then we recite Guru, which is the teacher or the Lama, and then Buddha is the fully enlightened one. Bodhisattva、uh, is the、uh, those who are the the practitioners or those who are aspiring、uh, for enlightenment. Uh, Sapariwara uh, is the retinue,、uh, the entire retinue, and、uh, and then we've said Rena Rena Mandala. So Rena Mandala is the、um, precious jewel、uh, mandala offering, and then we've said Punja, which is、uh, offering, and、uh, Mega. Is cloud, and then samudra is ocean, and then samaya is、uh, commitment, and then hum is the.、Uh, it means overcoming suffering, so that is the meaning of the mantra. So after having recited the thirty-seven point mandala offering, with that mantra at the end, now one proceeds to offer the the seven heap mandala offering. So this is the short version of the mandala offering, and this is what one should、uh, accumulate as much as one can. So in order to recite this, one、uh, should wipe off the wipe off the、uh, grains on the mandala, and then、uh, recite. Om Benza Bhume Ahum Shi Yonsu Tapa Wan Shen Seki Sa Shi Om Benza Re Kya. She jari kuyugi kore uso hum. Ri jabo ri ra shala le pa bo loro zambo le no palange. Chanda mi ni ni ma dawa hada mi bajo pusum sawa ma zawa me ba ti ni. Chin chin zawa da gibra jebe ba da lama thamba namda idam kinguro ge lazo sange da chaju samba thamba chugyongwe soma. 女杰努勒操达杰巴南姆拉乌瓦吉乌，图杰卓维顿杜谢苏苏，谢内钦杰拉乌杜苏。Now following the thirty-seven、uh, point mandala offering and the seven point mandala offering, one now、uh, will recite the short mandala offering. Uh, which is in the form of verses, and composed by the sixth Sakyatijan Sakyapendita Kunga Gyalsen. So for that, one will recite. Shinkam nambra daba de uigin rigya vidabla linshi deyen ayigi. Nima dawe korvachi lami longju pesunso gya sirinje namba de deje padam pasam shima me loto sedangu. Tuzam longju sami gya ngobe sana gya namba lama sange namla tuzabe sange thoba sho omo guru buddha bodhi sato sabare wara. Rena menda la punza mega samunda sabare na samaye. And then following that,、uh, one will recite the even shorter mandala offering, 
which goes as Saji Bushi, Jushi Mendotam, Jirab Nishini de Gembate, Sangeshin de Mide Pulwai, Jogun Nandashin de Chaba Show, Omoguru Buddha Bodhi Sado Sapari Vara Rena Mendal of Nzameka Samunda Saparena Samaye. And then following that, uh, one recites the sort of concluding prayers. Uh, we call it Kangi Chuze. So this one is um, this prayer, uh, which uh, I, I'm about to recite, is only recited by the Sakyapas. Um, but it is sort of the uh, explanation of the visualization of the earlier mage uh, mandala offerings where you multiply uh, where you visualize uh, many um, realms uh, filled with great offerings and then you sort of um, issue light from that uh, light rays issue forth and then at the tip of those light rays there are more pure realms and the number of um, the atoms of an ocean and then um, on top of that, there is uh, many more realms, and so it's sort of like they multiply uh, the the realms and making it very vast. So, and then one um, and one visualizes the, that uh, whatever jewels and um, excellent things that there are uh, that are desired by the gods and. Uh, the men uh, and uh, the humans, the men and women, and all of that, um, everything that is uh, desired by them, uh, one offers all of that, and um, s such as in this the similar way as uh, the mir miraculous offerings of Samantha Bhadra, and so one offering one offers a cloud of offerings in that way, and um, the duration which uh, one offers this is that um, um, is that uh, one that one's own offering that one is making fills space uh, fills the space just like the Dharma Dhatu uh, the nature of phenomena and uh, sentient beings reside uh, so until that time as long as Dharma Dhatu and sentient beings exist uh, so as long as they exist, I also make the offerings, these wonderful offerings to the Buddhas, uh, that, which are the Dharma kings, uh, the Bodhisattvas, which are their children, uh, the uh, Prateka Buddhas and the Arahats. Uh, and I make offerings to them at all times in pleasing them. So this is sort of the, the, the meaning of the prayer. And then um, one recites also and prays that um, from this time onward I offer my body, speech and mind and, um, and also whatever possessions I possess and all of the good karma that I've accumulated uh, in the three times and I offer it uh, to the uh, Guru and the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas and the like and for the sake I offer it for the sake of all sentient beings and I offer to you respectfully for that, for their sake. So please compassionately look upon us, and uh, especially myself, and accept my offerings uh, that I'm making to you, and bless me. And then one offers the mandala. So in order to recite, I just uh, mentioned the explanation uh, of the prayer before, beforehand. So now I will do the actual reciting. So for that. Uh, one may pick up the mandala, uh, pick it up like this, and one can hold it like this, and if one wishes to offer in a more respectful manner, one can hold it up to uh, one's uh, forehead, uh, close to above one's head. So one picks it up and then recites. Kangi chuzi shinkam gyatsu gyatsu dunye nalso chube jimpungi nambara gimpe gingi wese chochuro chube wege zemo gyatsu yi durge chanye rinche bemo rinche wejin guni gibe nimbo la hada mi dunye medi tugu bajun chewa chagya lene la kundu sambu namju chishin guni gibe simgi jube chudin dire chin chishin namgi 
Kamgün günla kapçın simçin yinte çisi para. Nabra nene çüge gelbo gelwa gelse rangya jale namgya ve. Güne gülve gengülü gündu nabra çöbe çöba gülge ni gülü ci. Tene çanju nimbe para da gelü dağ lan çö da. Tüsüm gebe ngubo nam. Simçin günge tünge çire gübe kela ulva ge. Güne sibe çinde ba yöne tamba ke namge. Dala zewe nirgunde dage te da shi su so shi ne chinge la du so lu. Omo guru buddha buddhi sa do sa ba re wa la re na men ja la bun za me ga sa mun ja sa ba re na sa ma ye hum. So one besides that. And then following that, one now can place the mandala back on the table. And then one should recite this prayer, which goes as Gemne Gundu Lama Rinpoche Tinshin Chugi Jela Sowa De Nyame Gajin Chingi Tuji Sik Dichi Pardo Gundu Chingi Lom. So the meaning of this prayer is To the precious Guru, the collection of all places of refuge, the greatly kind master of Dharma, I pray. Matchless one, benevolent one, look upon me with compassion and bless me always in this life, the next and the intermediate state. So by reciting this prayer, one puts uh, all of uh, one puts oneself in the care of one's guru completely, whether it be this life, uh, in the pardo, which is the intermediate state, in the future lives, and up until when one attains enlightenment, one completely puts all of one's trust in the guru, and uh, one puts uh, oneself under their care and prays to them for them to take care. Of uh, oneself compassionately, and so when one when one is reciting this, mentally one should think that other than the guru, one there's no one else who is uh, who can save oneself from the sufferings of samsara and the like. So there's none that is greater other than the guru, uh, because in the Vajrayana, the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, they are all emanated. Uh, are pure from the Guru, so the Guru is the main source. So without the Guru, there is no Buddha, there is no Dharma, there is no Sangha. So therefore, the Guru is of utmost importance. And luckily, we have uh, met a Guru. We have each of us have our own Gurus, uh, from whom one has uh, received Vajrayana empowerments and teachings. So one should put all of one's trust in them and pray that they take care of uh, you. So with that, one should recite this verse uh, as many times as possible with great devotion. Uh, and up until, uh, the best would be up, up until one can, uh, one feels so much a uh, strong surge of devotion that um, one ha has goosebumps and um, tears roll down one's uh, cheeks. So if one comes to that, uh, limit then it is a very good sign and uh, even if that doesn't happen uh, immediately that is also fine one should um, you know have develop great devotion and slowly develop uh, the devotion and in, in sort of uh, make it better increase the quality of the devotion up until um, and these signs sort of uh, occur so one should recite in that way and then following that, one should recite, Chu Lazo, we should Lamartim, Tea Rangi Chizu Neshu de Rani Bema da Gini de Ding, Tao Tamishu Nichinabu. So, what that means is that uh, the assembly of deities, the object of offering, dissolves into light and is absorbed into the Guru. So, all of the Yidam deities, and the, um, the Buddhas, the Bodhisattvas, and the like, all of them. Uh, all of them who are worthy of making offerings to, they all dissolve into light. So they all become light. Um, or they all turn into light. And um, that light is then absorbed into the Guru. So the light enters the Guru, who is in the form of Buddha Vajratara, uh, which one should remind oneself it's not in the human form, but in the form of the Buddha Vajratara, who is complete with the 32 major and 80 minor signs of a fully enlightened Buddha and in the Sambhogakaya form. 
So one should visualize that all of them, the assembly of deities, the object of offerings, dissolves into light and is absorbed into the Guru Vajratara. And then the Guru Vajratara himself enters through the top of one's head and then descends down, slowly descends down uh, up until the Guru Vajradara arrives at the center of one's heart where there is an eight petal lotus with a sun and moon disc in one's heart and then Guru Vajradara uh, makes that his seat and forever stays in there um, and never parting and always sits there and f from there on one will have received or obtained his blessings so I think that that has just happened or, or occurred that just that kind of process has just occurred and then after visualizing that the Guru Vajradara has uh, taken his seat on the eight petal lotus which is with along with the sun and moon disc which is uh, in the center of your heart um, then one must uh, sort of take a moment to uh, relax and meditate a bit and when one meditates of course one should uh, sit straight generally for the whole practice one should sit straight and um, and then especially right now during the meditation one sits straight and puts one's uh, two palms in this way the uh, sort of mudra of meditation and uh, when after having recited this verse and visualizing that process one should now with great devotion and faith uh, meditate upon the suchness or the nature of emptiness so one should uh, try to meditate on the nature of emptiness now at this moment after having recited this verse so uh, usually the nature of uh, meditating on the nature of emptiness can be difficult for beginners uh, because it is such a profound thing to understand but uh, if you practice right uh, the mandala offering correctly because as I mentioned it is a very swift way uh, it very quickly helps you to accumulate uh, your the accumulations of merit and wisdom and also uh, to purify negative deeds that sort of clears the path it opens way for you to directly come face to face with the nature of emptiness so due to that uh, to the blessings of the guru and your own efforts and uh, to the good karma that you've accumulated and also because now to the mandala offering many of your negative deeds have been purified uh, you um, the sort of the nature the understanding of the nature of emptiness will slowly and gradually, naturally uh, arise in one's uh, mind. So one does not really need to worry as long as one practices uh, well with great devotion. So with that one uh, takes a moment to meditate in that way. And after having done that, one now recites the ending prayers. And so for this, um, there is a choice. One can either recite this longer prayer or the short prayer. Uh, at the end so the longer prayer uh, so for the first for the longer prayer I believe this was uh, composed by Dogun Shigya Papa and it goes as Teba Gya Su Chui Yung Kune Kil Yung Deng Me Do Tsu Jim Tu Bui Jin Shilap Jum Me Deba Bui Ju Tsu Ding Zin Du Zi Sha Se Tang Ba Dang Deng Yang Yin Be Si Nye Da Jin Shin Kune Ying Zin Nam Ju Bo Ba Yi Du Dang Gya Zin Ba Ding Deng Wa Yi Dang Lu Sha Me Kang Zai Rab Gen Ni so this is the prayer just to recite it um, so you can identify the objects of offering that we are making now and so now um, we are making the offerings but the Guru uh, Buddha Vajradara is in your heart so you are making offerings to him uh, knowing that he is inseparable from uh, oneself and never parting so the prayer goes as in English the offerings which circle about an offering an ocean of hearing the flowers good qualities a cloud of incense moral conduct the offering lamp wisdom an ocean of scented water faith the holy food and nectar contemplative trance the sound produced by symbols songs of praise and by hosting an umbrella a banner of victory 
and streamers. All around compassion, discrimination and self-reliant wisdom, thus having well adorned the storied mansion, my body. I make our offerings to the Lord of Dharma, who is continually seated upon the full white moon and lotus within my heart, and pray with truly deep longing. Preceptor of living beings, may you always be pleased. So one makes this offering, and then uh, if one cannot do this, one can also recite a shorter prayer, which is in one verse, as it says here. Uh, so this is also a very simple prayer. It goes as, May all the prayers made for the benefit of living beings by the great and good Vajradhara down to my own kind root lama be fulfilled today. Uh, so this is the practice of the mandala offering. And um, after having done this session, it is said that uh, during the off time, or the time between the different sessions uh, of the mandala offering, and of course other of the practices in, in, included in the mandra, one should spend one's time performing virtuous deeds of the three doors, which is the body, speech, and mind. So one should avoid accumulating any negative deeds at any cost, at all costs. So one should always make sure that one's body is doing something good, by, uh, that, is, that one's body is either offering one's services, um, making offerings to the Guru and offering services um, to the body, to the Guru. And um, one's speech is always accumulating good deeds as well by praising the Guru, uh, reciting prayers to the Guru. And one's mind is also always accumulating good deeds, such as um, thinking of the Guru, uh, longing for his blessings, developing de uh, devotion towards the Guru, as well as compassion towards all sentient beings. So one should always keep one's body, speech and mind busy with accumulating uh, virtuous deeds uh, during the off time uh, of the mandala practice. So this is the um, practice of the mandala uh, offering which is uh, mentioned in the mandra practice by Dejun Riche. It is a very wonderful practice which any practitioner whether they be of uh, the beginner stage, the uh, any kind of like sort of like amateur or even of the higher stage all should uh, practice this. It is a wonderful practice that any type of level of practitioner should uh, practice with great efforts.